Hello and welcome to my video. In this video, we are going to state and prove the Lagrange's theorem. So, the Lagrange's theorem is a theorem from the topic of group theory, as we all know. Okay, so what is being said in the Lagrange's theorem is as follows. So, the Lagrange's theorem establishes the relation between the order of a group G, right? Of course, when you're writing the group G, we should, you know, sometimes mention the operation and the set structures of the same. So, the order of the group is related to the order of a subgroup H of the particular group with the same operation. So, the Lagrange's theorem is the, defines the relation between the order of the group and order of the subgroup, right? It says that the order of the subgroup H divides the order of the group G. Okay, let's formally uh, state this particular theorem and we shall move on to prove the same. All right, so the Lagrange's theorem uh, it, it, in order to state the theorem, let us assume that G is a group. So, let G be a group and H be a subgroup, be a subgroup of G, right, a subgroup of G. Then, the order of H divides the order, the order of G. So, this, my friends, is the theorem that we are looking for. This is the first part of the answer. Now, we would wish to prove this theorem. And in order to prove this theorem, we shall recall, we shall recall a particular property or a result, right? So, what is the result of the property? The result is as follows. The group G, the group G can be partitioned, partitioned into, into cosets of any of its any of its subgroups right so what what does it mean pictorially if we, if we try to see let's say that this is the group g so each of these partitions belong to each of the cosets so each of these partitions each of these partitions are cosets and these cosets will be non overlapping and the fun fact is that if we take the union of all these cosets, we shall get back the group. Now, we shall be using this particular result into, uh, our, uh, in, into our proof. Correct? Okay. So, let's see how we can do it. So, since H is a subgroup, H is a subgroup, of H is a subgroup of G, thus there exists a decomposition, decomposition or a partition of the group G by this subs by the cosets. I beg your pardon by the cosets of H in G, right? So, what do, we, what do we understand from here? We understand that G can be written as, let's say, A1H union A2H union and so on. I mean, let there be ANH cosets. So, each of these are cosets. Let me 
you know, let, let me explicitly write them down here. So this particular uh, coset, this particular is a coset, this particular entity is a coset. So G is essentially decomposed into, into the cosets defined by A1H, A2H, and so on up to ANH, right? So this is what we have done right now. The union of each of these, union of these together, union of the cosets together is going to give us our group G. And the other condition is that none of these are actually intersecting with anyone else. Correct? Okay. Now we'll uh, count the number of elements, right? Because that's what we are planning to do. So now, number of elements of A1H is same as the number of elements elements of H, right? Again, number of elements of A to H is same as the number of elements of H, isn't it? And so on and so forth, number of elements of A N H is equal to the number of elements of H. And why is it so? Because the size of a coset is same for all the elements, all the possible cosets, right? So, the, the, if given a particular subgroup H of G, the sizes of all its cosets are equal, correct? So, the uh, intersect the, so so the so so the non-intersecting union can be rewritten as follows, right? So if we can, you know, like uh, let, let's let's write that down one more time, and then we'll count the number of elements. So G is a one H union a two H union dot 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 union a n H, right? Okay. Now let's count the number of elements on the left hand side and the right hand side, right? So the number of elements on left hand side is the order of the group, correct? And the number of elements on the right hand side is going to be number of elements in A1H plus number of elements in A2H plus dot 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 plus number of elements in A1H and nothing else and nothing else see the reason i have written nothing else here is because of the principle of inclusion and exclusion and the reason the uh, the principle of inclusion and exclusion is not going to uh, have an effect in this summation is because all cosets because all cosets right a1h comma a2h comma dot 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 comma anh are disjoint right the reason the reason behind there being no other number associated in this summation is because the cosets are disjoint so the number of elements in G is exactly equal to the summation of the number of elements in each of the cosets. Now, the number of elements in A1H is exactly the same as the number of elements in H, plus number of elements in A2H is exactly equal to the number of elements of in H, right, plus dot 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 plus number of elements in ANH is also equal to the number of elements in H. We have seen this before, right? And that gives us the following. It says that this is n times number of elements of H. So basically, we have arrived to a relation 
which says that the number of elements in G is equal to n times the number of elements of H where n is an integer, right? Actually, it's a positive integer. n is a positive integer. n is a positive integer, right? n is actually the number of partitions, you know, uh, number of uh, cosets that form the coset decomposition of our group G. And now, my dear friends, this completes the proof because the, the, the number of elements in G is equal to the number of elements in H multiplied by N. We can say that the number, so the number of elements in H, the uh, order of H divides, divides the order of G or the number of elements in G, right? So, you know, we can, we can equivalently write this as order of H divides the order of G, right? And uh, that, my dear friend, completes the proof. Thank you so much for watching. You might go back the video and watch any step that you might have missed.